That's weird. Hello, everybody. Good morning. This is Steve Kazan, and thanks for joining. And we have attendees who are popping in, so we're going to wait a minute or two and let them get all logged in. Uh -oh. We have Jason and Clint and Carl and Brian. Thanks for joining. All right, so the chat is open. So feel free to add a uh, a line uh, letting us know where you're listening from this morning, what part of the country, what, what uh, MSP you're running or working for. There we go, Chicago, great. Louisiana, very nice. All right, we'll go in one more minute and then I'm gonna jump over Bucharest. Wow. Jeez, wow. evening. Hello, Richard from San Francisco. Brian from Illinois. Thanks for joining this morning. Very good. All right. Sh Chambersburg, PA. Okay. All right. Let me uh, share. So we can get that part of this thing done. And we'll go here and turn that down and we will go to there, there, slideshow. And... Heather, Tracy, how does that look? Looks great. Wonderful. Great. All right. So with no further ado, I'm going to kick off. So uh, whoever joins a little late will join a little late and they can catch up. Um, we'll start with our uh, boilerplate logistics. Um, everybody, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat. We're going to monitor those. And, and uh, as the presentation goes along, we will um, uh, potentially interrupt if, if it makes sense, or we will save the questions for the end. Um, once the presentation is done, we'll do some back office slicing and dicing with the video, and then we'll send out the link. So feel free to share the, the video, the recording uh, with colleagues and others that uh, you think uh, would benefit from it. The presentation we're going to talk about today, I kind of jumped right over that, is, is focused on employees. So fantastic, experienced um, folks in Tracy Harden and Heather Johnson, they'll talk about their backgrounds in, in just a little bit. But uh, if you're expecting a different webinar, then you're probably in the wrong place, but we're happy to have you and have you participate today. Um, uh, let's just roll right through and say uh, thanks to, the, to our sponsors, right? So the NSI TSP does have a number of sponsors. We're looking to add more sponsors, but we're grateful to them for both their cash sponsorship, but also in-kind sponsorships that they provide and support for us. So uh, if you know of uh, vendors or other companies out there that would uh, be great partners for us, um, please get a hold of Nicole and um, we'll have that conversation. All right. Moving right along. So uh, I'm going to hand this over to Tracy and Nicole, and they can introduce themselves, and um, we'll start the discussion. So Tracy, why don't you get going? You can oh, start. Thanks, Steve. Sure. Um, I'm Tracy Harden. I am the president and founder of Next Century Technologies. I started my company back in 2001. Um, right now, I have a team of eight folks at my office. I just finished up two books on IT, one on cybersecurity and one on IT operations. Both of them are on Amazon right now. I went to the University of Kentucky and got my, got my bachelor's degree, degree in computer science with specialization in business. A little did I know I'd be running a company when I went to UK, but here I am. And last noteworthy item is I started my company after I got fired. So this whole thing about employees and treating employees well really hits home when you come from a company that treated you really badly. So I'll hand it to you, you Heather. Do, what do you do for fun? Tracy? What do I do for fun? Yeah, I didn't put any fun stuff. Uh, I like boats. 
Uh, I have a pontoon and some kayaks. Uh, anything outdoors, getting away from the computers, hiking, biking, anything outdoors. And I love to read. And nerdy stuff. Come on. I'm a tech. I like that go. stuff too. <laughs> Great. All right. Heather, how about you? Yeah, I am the founder and CEO of Gozinta. Uh, we're a software company, but also just got into MSP consulting about a year ago. Um, we are a 12 person, actually, we just hired two people today. So we're a 14 person company as of today. So that's exciting. And we are in five different countries. So talking about remote working is a big strength of mine because hard to keep your value and, and your culture strong when it's remote and it's online. But um, I've had some good experience and learned from a lot of uh, mistakes and uh, you can share that. Um, I am a graduate from the University of Hartford. Um, my undergrad is actually journalism and music, so totally doesn't do anything for me here. But, but I do have my MBA focused in human resources. Um, I also have a partial master's in peace studies, which actually does come in really handy often. Um, peace relations and, and uh, conflict dispute resolutions is a great thing to have under your belt. Um, I was a former HR director for a university for five years, um, and I'm currently an HR and soft skills consultant for MSPs, and I am coming from the Netherlands, and I'm living out my dream and moving there to Europe. Tracy had mentioned before, this is probably like a great example of um, work-life balance, and I said, well, it kind of backfired, because while I can go to a cafe and have a coffee midday, I also start at nine in the morning and our US staff wakes up at three o'clock my time. So, you know, there's a, it's hard to unwind and say, okay, I'm going to step away because it makes for a bit of a long day, but good to have boundaries. And we'll talk about that. Um, making sure you have good work-life balance. Great. Okay. So let's jump into the topics. So this particular presentation is not a lot of slides. It is just discussions of various topics that um, we came up with to help you all grow, maintain, motivate your employees. So who wants to start? Start at the top. I think I you can, have some questions, Steve, yeah? I mean, I can start, start Steve, if you want. Yeah, please. Um, employee retention strategies, boy, I've had to fine tune that over the years. I started hiring in 2012. I was on my own for about 12 years. And then my company kind of outgrew me and I had to start hiring. So, um, and it's retention has become really important since COVID. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you guys, but I've lost employees to companies from California. They offer California pay and let people here in Kentucky work remotely. And it's just been, it's been really tough. Um, also bigger companies around me, you know, can offer more, these bigger corporations. So I've, come up with a couple things uh they're small but they add up um to try to compete uh, i can never fully compete you know dollar wise with those big organizations but uh i do have a lot of perks benefits and the biggest one i have and, and i get feedback from my staff on this the biggest one is paid health insurance 100 percent paid for my employees and I get it for less than $300 a month. I have learned for per employee. And I've learned uh, employees really don't care what policy you get. What they really care is that somebody picks it out for them. And then they tell all they want to know is how much it's going to cost them to go to a doctor's office visit. So I can say $30 or $35 a doctor's office visit. That Honestly, that's all they care. They didn't care about vision because they're all young. They didn't care about dental because they don't care about that stuff. I talked to my staff and paid health insurance was number one. And when you put it out in your job posting, boy, it's a big one um, because a lot of big companies don't offer that. I don't have a fancy plan. Again, it doesn't have to be real fancy. And when they're so young, you can get good rates. Uh, uh, to get best better rates, I do go through my local chamber of commerce. They had a group program, and I saved a lot of money by doing that. Um, I also offered hybrid work, work from home, work from the office. Everybody does come in throughout the week, but there's a balance there. That's a huge plus. Boy, they love that. Uh, I have company cars. 
so they don't have to use their own cars. That was always a big deal for me when I worked corporate world. I hated having to put all the miles on my car. Um, flexibility in hours. They have to go pick up a kid or somebody's sick or, you know, something happens. We have some flexibility. I have almost no overtime for my staff. Woohoo! Uh, and it's very little. So they actually get a break on that. Um, I offer a simple IRA, not a 401k. 401ks are very expensive, but a simple IRA. Uh, most of us will qualify for, and they're not that expensive to do. Again, looks lovely on a job uh, listing. Um, we do 15 days PTO. PTO, not sick and vacation. It's pay time off. I, I don't care what you're taking it for. It's PTO. Take it as you need it. Um, I also get them a nice laptop. Uh, all our laptops are less than five years old and get replaced regularly. Everybody likes cool tech. And we pay for certifications and training for them. So those are some of the ways I do to attract new employees and to keep employees and try to compete with the big guys. Those are great ideas. Uh, Heather, what would you add to that? Yeah, some things that I think are very important um, are having a clearly defined set of values. More and more as we're hiring and I talk to people looking for positions, they want to be part of something that's defined and knows who they are. They come in kind of understanding what they're part of. Um, if you're doing things in uh, your community to help out, they love to know that, that you're, you're helping out in, in other ways. Um, that that's something that people are, are looking for now to be something that's a little bit bigger than just a job. Um, having a nice, strong culture that you can define and people feel like they belong to something. Um, you have to be thinking about culture all the time. It doesn't just happen. And it, while it is an offshoot of who you are, it's also important to nurture it and develop it. Um, you should be hiring for culture. You should be thinking about that. We have a, um, well, I mean, you can bleep me out if we need to, but we have a no asshole policy. Um, so <laughs> but I don't think it's not going to be publicly broadcast. So I think Corey, we can all be okay with that. Don't worry, we're on cable. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but I think it's super important to have that because you know, one asshole in the in the group, and then everyone's feeling upset and not enjoying what they're doing. So even if they're the greatest tech, and they are just amazing, if they treat the rest of your staff or you or anybody inappropriately, they need to just go, um, people shouldn't just be bowing to them because they're very talented. Um, as Tracy said, you know, um, investing in their education. Um, I've heard from from companies that have been worried to do that because what if they leave? What if you give them a skill set and then they take off to their next position? Great. You're you're sending people out in the world with more skills. That's that's amazing. Do that. Other people are going to come to you and they're going to go out and say, you know, my company did this for me. You should work for them. Um, it's a great way to make a little difference in someone's life and also train up your staff to be as amazing as they can be. Um, we have a generous time off policy. I've heard people and, and I know this could be a big debate, but um, yeah, oh, Carl. Yeah. What if you don't train them and they stay? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we have a generous time off policy. Somebody once told me, well, I can, I'm going to go somewhere where they have a unlimited time off policy. And I want to give you my thoughts on this unlimited time off policy. Yeah, please. So the workers that you really want, I'm an amazing worker and <laughs> I can say I'm very humble, but I'm an amazing worker. But if I had an unlimited time off policy, I wouldn't take any time off because I wouldn't know what was expected of me. The people that are going to take as many days off as possible are probably the people that you aren't looking to keep. The people that work all the time and have a hard time taking time off are the ones that aren't going to benefit in that. When you're clear on your time off policy, we give 20 days off and we say you need to use them. We're encouraging you to use them, not just, yeah, yeah, you can take as much time off as you want. Nobody knows what that means. So they're like, is that five days? Is that 10 days? What is expected? And what is someone going to feel like, wow, this person's never here? Because there is that limit. If it, It's a generous time off policy is great, 
when it's unlimited, then it can get to the point where, hmm, yikes, this person's been gone for 40 days. That's not really what we meant with, with the unlimited time off policy. So just make the expectation. It's 20 days or it's 25 days. Make it clear for them so that they know. And managers and, and owners, you need to take those days off as well. Because when people that are working for you look and see you're not taking days off, and other managers aren't taking days off, they're gonna feel like, should I really be taking this time off? Because everyone else seems to be working nonstop. So make a culture where people focus on their mental health and rejuvenating themselves and being able to give you the best of themselves. Yeah, so Tracy, I think we talked about this, was providing the example, providing the model, right? For your people to, uh, to follow. So in terms of, time off and training and, and all those things, are there things that you do that you purposely want your people to to emulate? That's the right word. Well, actually, I've been working too much <laughs> and I'm bad for the 10 hour days. I mean, you know, I don't think about it in evenings and weekends and nobody works harder than the owner. That's the thing you have to keep in mind because um, I have a lot more invested. So I'm actually trying to work less and put up some little bit more healthier boundaries. And, and I know we're talking about, now we're kind of drifting into work-life balance here. Um, you know, I've had some serious medical scares and I live now more in the moment. So I appreciate my days a lot more than many people, unless you go through something like that. So um, I tried to take time off, but I also encourage my staff. They also get reminded, it's summer, take time off. Don't wait until right at the end of the year and try to use your time, take it while the weather's nice, go out and go. And we encourage people and we keep after them uh, to take time off. Um, you know, with training, I don't have the time to do organized training like I used to. I do a lot of online and then we have a lot of um, structure along, around our employee reviews on how training is handled. And so it's expected of them. And we put it all in the job description that it's expected of them. So there's no shock. Uh, I'm sure there's still shock. But anyway, you try to, you know, put a good job description out there and talk to them about it. But uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm actually trying to more or less take as many Fridays off as I can just to, especially when I was working on the books, I was doing tons and tons of hours and I've done that. So I'm trying to be a little bit kinder to myself. Mm. Are there, ways, are there ways that you reward the training or reward the, the certifications that all your techs are getting? Well, our bonus structure is tied to um, anywhere from three to five different criteria. And one of those is going to be training. So they can get up to, I won't go into all the details of this. They can get up to 5% bonus of their pay on, on that. And they get the bonus twice a year. So for the past six months, whatever their pay was, 5%. Um, and then they have goals. And each person has their own set of criteria and own trainings and own directions. And we talk to them. We try to see, what are you interested in? Instead of just saying, here, take this class. We're like, where are your interests lie in IT? Let's go with your strengths and interests, and let's do training in that direction. Oh, you like Azure? Hey, well, let's, let's do some Azure training because we need that. You know, as long as it's something that we can leverage and use, I'm very open to that. Uh, so that all gets built into their, uh, employee reviews automatically. So we try to keep it top of mind and it doesn't have to be expensive training. It could simply be something from Datto or Sophos, you know, you don't have to make it expensive paid or fly them anywhere. You can just make those kind of goals for the products you use. That's kind of, that's a lot what we do hmm. just to improve training on the products we have. So Heather, how about you? How, what training do you guys do for all your remote employees? Yeah, you know, it's really important for all of our positions. So, um, you know, not just our technical staff to be constantly looking at self-improvement. Uh, we do quarterly reviews, but we set a quarterly goal or, or a, an annual goal of what do you want to train up for through your quarterly goals to reach at the end of the year. And then we kind of figure out what training, what they should be doing to reach that year end goal 
which will also reflect in what their pay increase will be. So, you know, if somebody was like, I'm, I'm a little uncertain about Kubernetes. Well, actually, let's take a non-technical one. I'm a little confused about, um, I don't know, social media management. Okay, well then let's figure out how we can get you up to date on what's happening in social media right now and what training would get you there. And then at each quarterly review, we'd see, okay, are we hitting the, the um, outcomes that we're looking for? Are you getting the knowledge? Okay, let's see what other courses we can put you in. And as Tracy said, they, there's a lot of really good quality courses out there that don't have to be massive. You don't have to send somebody on site. There's a lot of online options. So, Well, so on the certifications, uh, I was talking to somebody who said that once their techs get certified, they take them to lunch. So they mm -hmm. have a little you know, ring the bell, donuts in the break room, a cake, a little celebration. Maybe they post something on LinkedIn, just congratulating, you know, that employee publicly for, you know, putting in the hard work and then passing the exam. Um, let's talk a little bit about their career path. You know, how early do you have that discussion with employees and how often do you have that discussion about where they want to head with their careers and, and how to get there? Yeah, for, for 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 me and what what I advise is that should be happening, really as you're interviewing people. You want to have those kind of discussions of where they see themselves and how you can help them get there. Um, most people, when they're interviewing, uh, you know, some people maybe want to stay in the same job, but you're looking to kind of nurture a staff and grow a staff. So you want to have that up front. If somebody just says, "Oh, I just want to stay doing this exact job. I never want to grow." that might not be the great greatest fit for you. So having those discussions early on and then making it clear that you're looking out for them and you're not forgetting them in this, in this whole equation. Because what sometimes happens is we're focused on our business outcomes, but we also need to remi remind ourselves that from their perspectives, their number one is going to be their own career path and their own life. So trying to make sure that they know that that's important to the whole team and to their managers, that we're looking out for them, we know what they're trying to get to, and we're going to help them try to get there. Tracy, do you have those conversations as well? And are they specific? Like, do you have timelines with employees about you will get to X milestone by X time? We have, within my company's very specific job descriptions for each position and each of those job descriptions details um, exactly what's required. So if they want to move up, it's very, and it's, it's a document shared in IT glue. We don't hide it from everybody, um, you know, to move up from, you know, the junior admin, you know, to the network admin, to the engineer, there are certain certifications and, uh, you know, and in time uh, experience at the office also plays a role in it. So uh, that all goes with our, you know, our employee reviews happening, you know, every six months, those discussions and the training all kind of tie in together and seeing what they want to do. You know, um, mm -hmm. the worst thing, and we're going to talk about mistakes. <laughs> yeah, you need to make mistakes, plural, not your biggest mistake. It needs to be your biggest mistakes, plural, with managing people is moving somebody up who isn't ready. So that's why I got really detailed in my job descriptions. Because it people don't aren't qualified and they demand for to be moved up and you know that can get you a lot of trouble too. So having really clear job descriptions and requirements for those is really key and important. Well, you you don't want to be forced to move somebody up, right? If somebody leaves and then you're stuck in a jam and you have a client that needs something right away. So that's kind of hard sometimes, I guess, right? It is, but usually in those situations, somebody leaves, myself or my VP can step in because mm -hmm. we've been doing this so long. <laughs> it's just, you know, I can, in a pinch, I have a lot of experience and a lot of things and I can, I can Google with the best, so. And that's <laughs> one of the things that's important, um, having regular, clear communications with 
employees, a lot of times it's hard to have those conversations that you're not meeting where you would need to be to move up to another position, but you're not doing them any favors by not having that conversation yep. because they wouldn't know what's going on. So it should be in a, in, in a way that they would know that they're not ready because you're having those regular communications of what needs to be worked on until they're ready for that next step. It's, it's I think, the most difficult thing to have those difficult conversations, but the only person you're, you're um, doing something good for is kind of yourself and actually not even that because then you're kind of stuck with somebody who doesn't know what's going on they're not being able to improve and give them that chance and that's when things go wrong and you have to fire somebody and it's it's unfortunate so so how yeah. often what's the cadence is it every week is it every other week is it once a month yeah for, it vary for, by seniority right for for our team we have um O3s, which are one-on-ones weekly. Um, and there is nothing that gets in the way of them. Those are my most important meetings. And I, if there's something huge that comes in, I don't put it at the times there's an O3 because I need my employees to know that they're number one and they're the most important. I'm not going to push them aside. Um, so I have them weekly. And then I have quarterly reviews obviously at every quarter. Um, and then we kind of talk about the bigger goals. How did they get there? We set new ones. And then at our O3s, we're talking about those every time so they don't fall away. Because we've all done reviews when you have annual reviews and then it's like the, the year comes by and you're like, wait, what was I supposed to do for the annual review? And the week before the annual review, you're like trying to quickly do your whole year's worth of stuff. And most of the time you're able to get it done. So having a process where every week it's like, this is this is what we're working for. This is how we're getting there. Are we still on course for that? So, so Heather, why do you call them O3s? One-on-ones. One-on-ones. O3. Oh, threes. Yep. Got it. Okay. Now we talked about skills development. I'm assuming hard skills, tech skills, but does that also include soft skills and management skills? And so how do you blend in those soft skills, skills into the training and the conversations? We hire for soft skills. We have a hiring process and um, they are that really what we're hiring for most of the time is soft skills. Secondary is tech because it's really hard to teach soft skills. Yes, you can go to it and, and there's probably people out there way better than me. I'm a technical person, not a people person. So um, we have a process to hire for soft skills from the get go. Um, and it's man, lots of mistakes along the way you learn, right. And you improve your process. Um, and, Lately, we've we've been pretty good on the soft skills in the hiring. Sometimes the tech skills aren't quite what we people say they are, but that's a different problem. How about you, Heather? Soft skills is that part yeah. of your regular discussions? It certainly is. Um, I, like Tracy, definitely um, soft skills is is very high up on my list when we're hiring um, because we have made mistakes otherwise. Uh, but it is still, you know, trainable um, and it's looking at different situations, role playing. Um, those are things that should be trained if the tech skills are great and they're, you know, um, short with customers, that's a big problem. That's going to lose you business. Um, it's so, all of this is so relational um, because your customers don't know if they're, that's a good tech or not. They do know if they're a nice person that they like or not. So that is one of the top things. Um, but having some role playing, trying to figure out, um, you know, different ways that they can think about things. Um, empathy talking about things in an empathetic way. So instead of looking at a customer and saying, oh, what an idiot, it's like, they're very smart at what they do, but they're not technical. That's why they're hiring us and we're helping them. We're helping another human and you know, trying to get them to look at things more empathetically. Um, also having a culture where you don't ever talk about a customer in a poor way is really great because it's very hard for people to go from a culture where everyone's like, oh, that customer, oh, they're here again, and then go to that customer and put on a smile and be like, oh, what can I do for you? So setting a culture where you're 
you're always looking at, yeah, um, yeah, they just have a lot going on and we want to help them. Much better way than, oh, no, not them again. So kind of having that culture to help with the soft skills is great. Okay. So speaking of the soft skills and hiring, Richard had a question about where are you sourcing? Are you sourcing from online places or you know, are you using person to person recommendations and introductions? Uh, you know, both I, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's great when one of our staff wants somebody to work with us. That's always, and that has worked out real well. Um, on those few times we, you know, somebody refers a friend that can be really beneficial. Um, I always take those very seriously. Otherwise we hire through indeed. And we have a process that we go through, and it's a multi-level process. Uh, honestly, a good person usually takes two or three months to find and hire. It's, mm -hmm. gosh, it's just, it's painful. But if we try to shortcut the process, we end up firing the person because we try to take shortcuts. So, right. so are you stealing people from vendors or are you taking people from other MSPs? Mm -hmm. Where what are good oh, pools? Oh yeah, to we've go gotten some into? from other MSPs. We now, I know for a fact other MSPs come after my staff on LinkedIn. Uh, I've been told that that happens. Uh, we do not aggressively go after other MSP staff. Um, however, we've had several of the other MSPs employees come in. We've just recently hired one that came from another MSP, and uh, they came to us, and we listened very carefully in the interview what the problems were there. And, you know, he seems very happy and has brought several clients, so to speak, with him over that they sought him out. Not us. We're not starting those conversations. So uh, okay. I'm probably a little nicer player in that. Um, you know, and I try to do a good job description with clear expectations, clear definition of what the job is. And uh, all of the benefits I mentioned earlier, they're all in the job description mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. These are the benefits we offer. And right. one of the things I didn't mention was we have culture. We have a a, a friendly, team-focused culture. If you got to be a team player, we all help each other out. Nobody, you know, nobody's king or queen in my group. I've worked in corporate world where people were their own silos that were above me, and or my peers were more technically advanced, and they wouldn't help me at all. They went out of their way to shut me out. Well, I don't tolerate that. Yeah. They're gone in my in my office. I can't do that. So, yeah, Heather, you focus on teamwork as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, we we all help each other out, even in different departments. Um, but going to hiring, a, a tip there. Um, we did this, um, this has been used several times, but we do this for developers because developers are very difficult to find, but we work with a local um, coding college um, and we mentor students. They've gotten to know us. So now we have an internship program here that that use, those students go to once they graduate. So that's been really, really fruitful for us. But the MSP that we were born out of, um, some of the owners of that sat on boards of local technical colleges. So you're starting to get to learn other people that are in business, that are doing technical things, and you're just getting out there. You know, I think, uh, and I'm, I, I don't seem like it, but I'm actually a very shy person. And when I got into business, I was like, oh, we have to talk to other people. That's terrifying. I don't know if I want to do this. And and what I have found that that has been 90% of the success that I've had is getting to be very comfortable with that. And I know a lot of people aren't, but it is really important. And in hiring, it's everything. Just get out there, not get out there and say, I'm doing this because I want to hire people, but it's going to help you get new customers. It's, go it's going to help you in so many different ways. It's unbelievable. So just see where you can, you know, volunteer at the Chamber of Commerce, see where you can help out in your community, because you'll be surprised how many people come forward with, with candidates to work for you or customers. Got it. Great. Um, there's a question in the, in the chat about incentives for finding people. So is there, do you have referral programs offering a little sweetener for somebody who introduces a, somebody who gets hired? We do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
we try to ask our our current employees first when a when a position goes out so we can you know because that would be great easy as tracy said those processes are so hard that if we can shortcut it a little bit it's super <laughs> right so in creating your culture have you found any value leverage benefit from being kind of a positioning yourselves as green companies as as interested in sustainability has that brought you more either clients or employees really yeah um we started going green i mean since the beginning we have been green focused and we started going carbon neutral a year ago and we did that because that's what my husband and I, who founded the company, that was just something we always intended to do. Um, we're actually surprised at how um, people have sought that out. Uh, I was at the TNW conference in Amsterdam, and we were just like tiny, tiny little booth among maybe 300. And people were seeking us out because they saw the sustainability work that we were doing and they were giving us resumes right there. Uh, and I was I was shocked. I, I had no idea that was what was going to happen. Um, so I think people are looking for that companies that are trying to to um, make their impact on the world a little bit smaller. Um, and it's it is difficult, you know, all the travel that we do for conferences, you have to take all that in mind. Um, and I mean, servers alone. So it's it's being really thoughtful about the vendors that you choose. Um, it's some work, but I think it's important that all companies start looking at that anyway. Hmm. All right. So the final comment, the biggest mistakes, plural. Yeah. Um, what have you done and what did you do to fix it? And, and what's the lesson for our audience? Who wants to start on that topic? I, I, think your, I think your topics are on the next slide, I think, has the uh, um, our, I, my, our top five. I think uh, I think there are lessons. My my mistake would be um let's see. Um I think hiring for a problem instead of actually fixing the problem. Um sometimes we say, oh, goodness, we need to just bring somebody in to do this. But the problem is actually more underlying and we need to fix that. So bringing somebody in and saying, fix this mess is not the best strategy. And you're not setting that person up for success because you don't even know what the problem is. So making sure that you have it, it goes back to kind of really taking your time to figure out what would I have this person do instead of just hiring somebody and say, I don't know what you should do, but I don't know anything about finance. So, so you need to kind of take that time and make sure that your roles are very clearly defined. So you set them up for success. You know what you're looking for as far as an outcome is. Um, and that, because otherwise they're gonna be confused at what you're asking for. Um, you need to kind of set that up very clearly from the start. This is what will be successful if you do. And this, means you're not hitting those targets um, and we need to look at how to get you there. So that's probably my biggest. My biggest mistake has been with promotions, which is number two on this slide. Um, twice I have promoted somebody that wasn't ready. Uh, and now I'm in a situation where in the first time I did it, I pulled the promote I had to pull the promotion back I was paying she just wasn't qualified for that level of work pulled it back and boy did she get passive aggressive with me and I fired her you just can't undo a promotion so the second time I made the mistake thankfully the person quit before they got a really terrible employee review because he knew too and the third time somebody asked for promotion and wasn't ready the answer was just no he, he wasn't doing the work. He wasn't taking the classes. We tried to get him to take class. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to promote. And he finally quit so he could have more opportunities. I, you know, I can't, you know, just watch it with your promotions. Once you promote somebody, you really can't undo it. Um, or you can do like, so I, I learned that the hard way. I had an employee that wanted to be the service manager, but she was not a real technical person. 
So we gave her a soft promotion of like, why don't you try a little bit of this on and see these few things and see if you like it. And over the course of the year, she kind of worked into it and she was perfectly happy. And cause I didn't want to lose her, you know, so careful with those promotions. Um, cause if you promote them and don't work out, you need to fire them. Uh, All right. another... so, so that concept, the soft promotion. Yeah. I think that's a key lesson. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Definitely a tool that everyone could be using. Great. Yes. All right. What's next? Uh, familiarity breeds contempt. I had an employee who had a daughter the same age as mine. And when you decide to become friends with your employees, actually, I recommend you don't. They're your employees, not your friends. Mm -hmm. Draw that line. And so, yeah, familiarity breeds contempt is a real deal. And she's the one I had to pull the promotion on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She got real, like I said, passive aggressive, wouldn't talk to me. I mean, I felt like I was back in high school. So um, I personally choose, you know, when if people I don't invite them on my social media, you know, I don't invite them to join if they ask for a friend request or accept it. And once they leave, I unfriend and disconnect from them. I draw the line pretty good on my staff. Um, and I'm friendly and I, you know, we go out regularly, we do parties, cookouts and other events, but I, I keep it very professional, you know. More great advice. Um, Heather, any other mistakes that you're willing to share <laughs> well, or not willing to share? Looking at, looking at, um, you know, Hire slow, fire fast. Um, this is one of the ones that Tracy put up. And and I think that's, um, you know, one of the things that it's important to kind of have that self-analysis with some of that, because definitely hiring slow, because you're taking on somebody's life and future, essentially. So you need to be sure that that person is going to be able to be successful. And, you know, firing fast, I'm a little bit more uh, fire um, carefully fast, um, because <laughs> you're taking responsibility for somebody's future and you should really make sure that you've done your part to make sure that they've been set up for success. And when you do fire somebody, yeah, sometimes, you know, like the no asshole rule, it's just not, uh, it's not a good fit for your culture. And when it's a really strong, not culture fit, that's when I feel like fire fast, because that's not going to change. That's a person and who they are. But if it has to do more with their skill set and trying to get them there, you really need to try to give them the tools that they need. Um, and when I've had to, when, when employment hasn't worked out for someone in the past, I spend a lot of time trying to figure out what I could do different in our training and our mm -hmm. onboarding, um, in, in our reviews, like where did it go wrong and how could I have better support supported that person so they were successful. Um, so taking that time to be really reflective is important. So Let you do comment. a little self-assessment self of your management style, your management decisions, and yes. then more broadly to the company, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's very Great. important looking at cultivating a positive work culture. It's hard to do. And you don't want to have a culture of fear that, you know, oh, you know, there's firing going on all the time. You really want to be very careful. And when you set those goals up and it's consistent, I mean, certainly you don't want it to get to that point where other employees are feeling upset because they're having to take the workload on. But if you're having regular um, meetings and you're seeing, okay, this is a, a pattern and it's not changing, that's when you need to go ahead and fire. But if they are trying, you know, that that's the better way um, because you want to have that positive work culture that people are there trying to support you get to get where they need to. So Tracy, great. Thank you. So Tracy, I think you had a comment. On the fire fast, I'm, I'm going to fire faster than Heather. <laughs> <laughs> I had a situation where so I've learned that if the employee is unhappy in your office, they're sharing that unhappiness with the clients and I lost a major client. Okay, so that's like legit, guys. If you're having a problem with them in the office, they're going to very likely be spreading that to your clients. Right. So if there's a problem you can see, there's also a problem you can't yeah, see. Yeah, if you're having problems and I'm seeing that and a yeah, major, major client of mine was lost over it. So, yeah. hey, it's real. Yeah. All right. So I want to roll back just a little bit to one of the first things that Tracy said, which was coming out of COVID. 
So my question is the changes in the hiring environment, right? We had a situation where higher unemployment, easier to find technical people, fewer jobs. We went through COVID, big companies were hiring in rural areas, taking away, competing for top talent. Now we're coming back to a situation where there's low unemployment, there's a dearth of tech people out there, good tech people with soft skills. How do you stay agile? How do you adjust to changes in the hiring and in the labor markets of the people that you really want? Let me put that out on the table and and see what you're what you what you can advise us on. I, I'm going to go back to keeping those relationships strong. I, I, you know, you, your culture, your values, making sure your job descriptions all surround that. So you're getting the right message out there and who you are is, is easy to um, express. But having all of those relationships that know you is really important to keep because when the hiring market is tough, those are the people you go to and say, I'm hiring. You have somebody good for me. Do you, can you think of somebody? Can you give me a few names? And that's what always comes through for us when, when it's difficult to find the right people. I can't disagree with Heather. I, I don't think the core process changes just because of COVID or something else comes along. You're, you're, you're going to want to protect your culture. And one of the things I do to help protect my culture is part of my hiring process is my staff interviews the candidate. Well, you talk about people very interested in who you're interviewing. They want to know who they're working with. You you get them involved. That's like the last step. And I tell you, we've made we've had people go through and then they do the staff meeting a luncheon. It's a luncheon. I'm mm -hmm. not part of it. I actually step away so they can talk about me. Um, but they've come back and said, I don't, you know, we heard them say this. We heard them say, we don't have a good feeling about this person. And I take it. Mm -hmm. It's rare. But they've come back and said, hey. And so when you give them, um, you give your staff permission to have a say in the culture, that means a lot. Mm -hmm. They're invested in it, right? They have a stake. They feel heard. Investment, yes, is the word I was looking for. They're invested. So, yeah, they feel heard. I, I'll actually, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yep. fantastic. Uh, we'll open it up for just any sort of questions from the audience, put them in the chat. Um, three things to do tomorrow. Let's just kind of lay these out for folks. I guess in terms of raises, you have to be sort of cognizant about market prices and value of employees, right? Are those the two main variables? That, and I lived in the world where the only time I got a raise is when I switched jobs. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that sucked. Mm -hmm. So I try not to do that with my staff. Yeah. If they feel that way, the only way they'll get a raise is go somewhere else. They will go somewhere else if they feel unappreciated. Mm -hmm. Yep. Raises and also recognition, you know, yeah. having a culture where you're saying, wow, this person got a great review, guys, let's all celebrate it is a great way to make somebody's day. Um, I've definitely worked in places where I've done great things and nobody knew anything about it. And it just felt like, goodness, <laughs> I mean, I feel great about myself, but it would be nice if like anyone else knew that I did anything good. Um, and then you start feeling like, does anybody even notice that I'm here and that I am doing anything good? And it really, really starts to weigh on that culture. So having a culture where you can celebrate everybody and what they're doing is really important. And the last one, the scheduling the company meetings, is that just a standard once a month, every other week kind of deal? Or is so, it you have special meetings for something, a special event or a special success? So what we do, uh, and we're a remote company, obviously, so it's a little bit different, but we like to get together quarterly and we talk about, it's like an official company meeting. We talk about what we've achieved. We've talked about successes. We talk about, you know, we had, gosh, we had a great quarter last time because one of our employees got married, one went traveling, one, two got promoted. So we celebrate all of these life things and exciting things that are happening. And then we have something called squad hangouts and those are monthly. And we just 
chill out and have a good time. But everything is around the core values because, I mean, think about the places you've worked in the past. How many people can say, oh, the values of this place were this? Probably not too often. And it's because it's not repeated all the time. You need to re be repeating that to your staff so many times that they start saying it to your customers because those are important things. That's branding for your company, but it's also who you are as a company. So saying it all the time is super important. Sometimes I feel like I'm a broken record and I feel like everyone probably thinks I'm annoying. But if you look at commercials, they say the same phrase in 60 seconds about seven times and you're fine with it. So you can say your values all that you want and people will be okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So kind of wrapping up comments, wrapping up suggestions. Uh, Tracy, any final last words? Oh, people are hard. Uh, yes. I, that's just me. I, I'm I'm people a tech person. Hard. I'm not a people person. I've, I've had to, I've gotten coaching. Hey, don't, you know, there's not enough i don't have enough time to read all the books i need to read learn all this stuff find somebody that's done it and has success uh my husband has been in hr for a huge chunk of his career that's been hugely helpful for me um hire coaches you know it's just peer, it's tough peer groups. yeah peer groups are helpful too absolutely it's just really tough all right cool great thank you that's excellent heather last final last words yeah, I mean, I, I totally mirror that. Um, obviously, I do coaching on this, so happy to talk to anybody about it. Um, the, the biggest thing I would say is to, even though it's scary and people are scary, to talk to them all the time because if they're quiet, it's probably not good. Uh, you want to constantly be talking to them and kind of have your pulse on every single person. Don't just assume because they're just working away quietly that they are happy with everything. Get Make sure you establish that open um, dialogue that's happening weekly. So when they do have a problem, they feel comfortable to bring it up. Great. All right. So I have a whole list on my sheet okay. of suggestions, learnings, recommendations, and I will put them out uh, in the follow-up email um, that goes out with the recording. So this has really been this fantastic. Um, we do our normal plugs at the end of all of our webinars, elections. So for all of you that are members or non-members, um, by all means, get involved. Um, we could definitely use the sets of hands and the ideas. Um, we have a uh, all hands meeting next week, which is normally great because all the employees get on and they complain about vendors uh, and they share uh, news and ideas. And we have a badging process that's going on. So we'll hear about that next week. Um, and then once a month, we talk legislation. So for those of you who are interested in regulations at the state level or the national level, um, this is a good place to go and get updated um, on what's going on. Uh, all the events are at uh, nsitsp.org slash events. So you can find what's going on on that location. In terms of membership, if you're not members, get out your phones, photograph the QR code and uh, sign up right away. The value you get for your membership, uh, I sound like a public radio person, is a fraction of the cost. And it's uh, what, one latte every day. So anyway, it's inexpensive and a few more links to get to our website. And with that, uh, we will say thank you so much to Tracy and Heather. You guys did a fantastic job. We will um, get this information out there and posted and uh, look forward to more chats about best practices around this hard, hard topic of how to effectively manage and retain and build loyalty and motivation with your people. So thank and you Steve, so much. Steve, I forgot to mention our committees are looking for volunteers. So if you want to be involved and see what goes on behind the scenes, volunteer for a committee, but you have to be a paid member to do it. And there elections are now. So yep. Yep. Register now. Yes. All right. Finally, we'll wrap up. Here's how to reach Heather and Tracy. And thanks everybody. And go out and have a great day. We will see you all soon. Bye.